So here's the question, is packing an art or a skill? And the answer is yes to both. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 20 common mistakes of inexperienced travelers when it comes to packing for their travels. And the first one I'm gonna hit is folding instead of rolling clothes when people pack them. So inexperienced travelers will often take shirts or pants or whatever and fold them like this, kind of like you have them at home, you fold them. But experienced travelers, travelers who will travel a lot, will roll them instead of folding them. Why? Things that are folded like this, especially when you put a lot of them in a suitcase, have mega creases where it comes to those spots, mega wrinkles that are just super hard to get out. It also takes up a lot of space when it's folded like this, and so expert travelers instead roll their clothes because the wrinkles are smaller, and these are just easier to get out of your suitcase, but the pro the pro travelers will not just put these in their suitcase, but will have some packing cubes, some things like this to put the rolled up shirts in, socks, underwear, any things, and organize them just like that. Now, super pros might even have different size packing cubes for different things. And you can think about doing the packing cubes a few different ways. One would be all your socks in this one, all your shirts in this one, all your underwear in this one. Another way to do it is by days. You might put all your first day stuff in one, your second day stuff in another, your third day stuff in the next one. That way when you're deciding what do I need to take for today, you can just pull out that packing cube and that is that day. Now, if you're traveling with some really dressy clothes, um, like a like a dress suit or something like that, or a dress that doesn't fit and you, you can't roll, then these plastic liners from the dry cleaners work wonders. Put these in between shirts, put it in between your suit, fold your suit over the plastic liner and it will keep it pretty much wrinkle free. And my last tip for clothes is that if you have to travel with dress clothes like dress shirts, maybe inexperienced travelers don't realize that dry cleaners will often fold things for you. Most dry cleaners, you get stuff back and it comes on a hanger, but you can say to most dry cleaners, can you, can you fold it? And they'll fold it and then you get it back just neatly like this. So whenever I do my dress clothes, yes, I do wear dress clothes, not always yellow shirts. Uh, I always have a set of folded dress shirts ready to go and bagged for when I'm traveling. The second mistake that inexperienced travelers make when they're packing is they just pack too much stuff. People who haven't traveled a lot don't realize what they need and what they don't need. And we've all made this mistake when we started traveling, which is bringing our whole house with us. You know, you might say, well, do I need a shirt for every day that I'm going? Depends, you're going to a beach destination, you might have a day that you don't need a shirt. Do you need 10 pairs of pants? Do you need 10 pairs of socks? What do you need? And really being experienced is about boiling it down to the essentials and then thinking, well, what is it that are maybe contingencies that I can buy when I'm at that destination that I might not need it, but I can get it. Uh, now, if you're traveling for a long time, there's another trap people fall into where they go for a month someplace and they say, I gosh, I need big suitcases because I need to bring a month's worth of stuff. Uh, I advise if you're going any place for more than a week, if you're going more than seven days, you should plan to do laundry in that destination. Maybe consider staying in a hotel where the hotels have laundry or near a laundry facility. Some hotels, you know, will do full service laundry where you can give them your stuff, they'll wash it and hang it up in your room. Others will have uh, places where you can just do it, some charge, some it's for free, uh, but do just plan to do your laundry. You know, people who are really expert backpackers, they'll often just have a couple shirts, couple pairs of pants, wash it in their room, in their sink, hang it to dry with some fast drying laundry. Uh, on the live stream, Kyle Mo says, my wife brings her whole closet every time we go out. That is certainly a challenge. Mark says, pack half of what you think you'll need and take a good credit card. That's a good tip as well. Now, the one part where 
um, you know, maybe it's worth traveling heavy uh, is if you're going to some place like Death Valley where there's like no stores or you're going to some remote island someplace, then I get it. You'll need to bring everything that you could possibly need because there aren't a lot of options, but any place uh, that has stores or things like that, slightly underpack and buy what you need. And also, if, you, if you're somebody who likes to buy clothes, you know, think about you might buy a shirt or two. You might buy a pair of pants and that's one or two less things you have to take with you and you got room in your luggage for you to bring it back. The third mistake that inexperienced travelers often make uh, is actually, this is contrary to what I just said, but it's going to be assuming that they can buy whatever they need at their destination. There are many things you can buy at your destination, but there are many things that you can't. What do I mean now? in particular things like medicines. Uh, medicines are one of those where like around the world there's different medicine. In the US, I, I really like Neosporin for cuts and scrapes. Can't find that in a lot of countries. Can't find that in Japan. Can't find that in Australia. And so if you've got some medicine, some things that are off the counter, off the shelf uh, that you like, that might be hard to find, make sure you actually bring those with you. Uh, and the other one, um, is electronics too. Uh, like in the case of if you've got like a certain camera or a certain thing and you need a certain adapter, don't think that you'll be able to get the same one in the country that you're going to because often electronics have different varieties and are sold differently in different regions. Uh, Paintkiller says uh, the way they like to handle buying things is buying things they would use. For example, some dress shoes in Armenia. That is a good tip uh, as well. That Mark has a good tip here, which says, this may sound weird, but I take clothes I can throw away as I go. It doesn't sound weird as all weird at all. Uh, we'll actually do the same thing. We might say like, take some underwear and some socks that are like really end of life. And so at the end of the day we wear them, then they're end of life. We can just throw them away and they don't need to come with us uh, anymore. You know, we, we all need to refresh those things every once in a while. So the trip you travel might be a good way to do that. Um, Zachary Smith points out another category of things that you might not be able to buy in your destination are feminine products. Uh, and so that's a great point. Same with deodorant. Uh, and so those are great tips as two specific items. Thank you for that, Zachary. The fourth mistake that inexperienced travelers make is they buy their luggage at some discount big box store, like in the luggage aisle at Walmart and Target. And I have to confess, I made this mistake. Uh, one of the first, like started traveling, I bought a suitcase at Target. It was the worst suitcase I ever bought. The zippers on that thing broke after three trips. It was super heavy. Uh, and you know what? That stuff is really cheap for a reason. It's just not good. All, all luggage may look the same, but let me tell you, all luggage is not the same. Um, and so what I would suggest, and you've probably heard me talk about this, Chris, what do you like? Um, I really like Ramoa suitcases. We'll talk probably more about that later. Uh, I also really like um, Travel Pro suitcases. Uh, those are two good varieties and you're not gonna find really the best brands at Walmart or Target. Uh, you might find good ones at Costco. Costco often sells pretty good luggage. Um, now also, Buying a suitcase bigger is not always better. Sometimes people think, I'll just get the biggest one. But you know what? When you're going to place, particularly if you're traveling by train, a big suitcase is just untenable. You can't put it on trains. It won't fit in trunks of taxis. And so more smaller bags is often better than one big bag. Although you do have to keep in mind if you're traveling by air, how much does it cost for you to check those in? But we generally prefer smaller bags as opposed to bigger bags. And you'll find if you just if you just look at luggage that people have, it's the people who definitely look like they've traveled way less that have the suitcase that they can't even move around rather than the smaller ones. <clears throat> also, the other problem with the big suitcase with everything is it gets heavy. And then you won't get charged with a second suitcase fee, but you'll get charged with a overweight suitcase fee. And those can be $150 on some airlines. They can be really quite expensive. 
Mark says, I went through cheap pieces of luggage a dozen times before I bought an expensive tank. Would have been way cheaper if I bought the tank first. I couldn't I agree with you completely, Mark. Uh, and the expensive tanks that I've got back here, both of those are 10 plus years old and are going strong just like the day I bought them. The Uniplex says, I travel light. I don't check luggage. Uh, and you know what? Carry on. Like if you can do it, carry on totally is the best, but not everybody uh, can do it. Um, you know, particularly traveling with a two-year-old, it gets pretty hard to not check anything in. Uh... Kangas Conrad says, glad I decided to buy carry-on suitcases. I'm gonna be on the Eurostar and the tube. Yeah, for sure, that's another one where people, like when you're getting on the subway or public transportation, if you got these huge things, it's just really hard. Uh, Mario says, I love Samsonite suitcases. My husband and I love ours and they come in fun colors too. Zachary says, my parents always said one should not be cheap with suitcases, shoes, and bed mattresses. Zachary, those are definitely words of wisdom to live by from your parents. Mistake number five of inexperienced travelers is waiting until the last minute to pack. You know, there's this saying that uh, if you wait till the last minute, how long is it going to take? It only takes a minute because you've only got a minute. But people who wait till the last minute to pack their suitcase the night before often forget things because they're in a rush and they don't have time and maybe they're tired or they're rushed or they're stressed. And so they just throw stuff in there and that's when you're going to be missing something. Uh, and so for big trips, I like to not start packing two days before, but finish packing two days before. So meaning that if I'm going on a trip to Las Vegas in, uh, what's today? I don't remember, today's Thursday. If I was going on a trip to Las Vegas on Saturday, this would be packed tonight. That would be my goal. Why? Well, so that if there's something that I need that I forgot, that I don't know where it is, that I lost it, I still have one more like real day to maybe go buy it. I need a belt, I need an umbrella, I need something. Uh, that's why I think you should pack, uh, you should finish packing two days before. I think it's also worthwhile to start packing a few days before that two day date. Just think about what do you need? What does it look like? And and I recommend um, not, not packing it all at one time because this leads us to mistake number six, which is packing one item at a time into their suitcase. Inexperienced travelers will do that. They'll open up the suitcase, they will get one item, and they will put it into the suitcase. And they'll get the next item, and they'll put that into the suitcase. And they'll get the next item, and they'll put that into the suitcase. And then quickly they'll be like, did, did I pack that, did, did I pack that pair of pants? Did I, did I pack that umbrella? And then they don't remember because it's under the, and then they're gonna dig through it to find if they packed it. What I like to do is everything that I'm gonna pack, I lay it out on a bed, on a sofa, on the floor, so I can see it all, see it all. And when I can see all the things I wanna pack and they're all out there, then I put them all in the suitcase. So I like to think of packing as really this two-step process. One is, collecting all the items you're gonna take with you and putting them out in the open. And then step two is taking all those items from the open and actually putting them in the suitcase. If you do that, it's the best way to pack the suitcase because you've got all the things in front of you. You can play that game of Tetris. You know all the pieces that you have and you're not constantly like, okay, what piece is coming next? I don't know if I put it in the right order. Mistake number seven of inexperienced travelers is failing to research what they actually need to pack going to a destination. And you know, it's really uh, easy to think about. I just pack the same thing everywhere I go, except if you're going to Europe and uh, you wear high heels, those don't work out in a lot of European cities because of the cobblestone. Uh, if you're going to Hawaii, for example, um, Waikiki, Honolulu, Oahu, a lot of paved stuff. If you're going to Kauai, you'll want a lot of hiking shoes because it's much more hikey and less walky. Um, so it's really important to look. Is it a well-paved destination? Is it a dirt destination? A sand destination? Is it going to be slippery? What's the weather like? Is it hot? Is it humid? Are you in the northern hemisphere and you're going to the southern hemisphere? So it's going to be completely different. Those are all really important things to think about when you're actually packing your suitcase. Uh, Paintkiller93 says checklists are the way to go. I see a lot of people uh, advise checklists and have checklists. 
I'm not a checklist kind of person, maybe because I just, I can store a lot of stuff in my head, but if you are a checklist kind of person, then I, I recommend it because you can put it all together and have that checklist. For, for me, because I travel so often, I basically have like a travel set of everything. So in my closet, I've got like, this is all my travel stuff. And so it's really easy just to kind of look at it and be like, okay, there's my toiletry kit. There are the yellow shirts that I'm gonna take. Uh, there's the umbrellas that I'm gonna take. Uh, it, for me, it's less of a checklist because I just go stare at the stuff that I usually take and kind of put it in. Uh, Brandon says, Travel Tetris is my game. It's a great game. Uh, Franco points out, it's very difficult to walk through cobblestone streets of Europe with a large suitcase. It sure is. And so that might actually be a reason if you're going to a cobblestone destination or you're going to a dirt destination to actually maybe want a duffel bag or a big backpack and not something with wheels you have to pull through. Things with wheels don't work real well in the snow either. If you're going to a snowy destination, that suitcase, it's going to go a whole bunch of nowhere. Um, and... Uh, Peter says, yeah, unless you're going to Antarctica or Death Valley, you can buy underwear and socks cheaply, less to pack. That's two. You could just say, I'm not taking those at all, and I'll just buy them when I get there. Um, tip here, which is to wear shoes that double as gym shoes. That's a good tip as well. Some hotels even offer, like gyms, like some Westons offer, like, gym shoes and shorts. Though it never works for me, because I, um, I wear size 14 shoes. So that, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I, need to, I need to bring my own shoes pretty much wherever I go. When I go to Japan and I stay in the onsen hotels and they expect you to wear slippers out around, I have to bring my own slippers too because I don't fit in the Japanese provided slippers. The eighth mistake of inexperienced travelers is packing pillows and blankets. Come on, it's the 21st century. Where are you going that you need a pillow and a blanket? If you're going to those sorts of hotels, you should book better hotels. If you're camping, it's a different story. I get it. But then in that case, I'd recommend you actually uh, not bring your like your home king size pillow. I see people carrying these pillows through airports. You know, like carrying this pillow around. Like, where the heck are you going with your pillow? Um, like, they, they're like there are travel pillows. Uh, REI has these travel camping pillows. I have some camping pillows for the couple times I've camped. I don't love camping, but I have them because I'm like, this is going to be a whole lot better to take than this thing right here. Uh, Mark uh, says, how tall am I? I am six feet tall, size 14 shoes. Depends on the shoe. Some shoes I'm up to a 15. Some shoes I can get as a 13, but I generally normalize in Nikes or Hoka's as size 14. Seth says, big shoes. And you know what they, you know what they say about big shoes? Big shoes means big feet, which also means big socks. Um, <clears throat> Hunter says, what's the best luggage you have found? Um, the ones I've got behind me that I travel with the most are Ramoa and Travel Pro. Those are just kind of the, the, the brands I've had pretty good success with. Now, I do have some new luggage that I'm going to be taking with me on my next trip um, from a company called Level 8. Uh, you know why? Because they had a yellow suitcase. Uh, it just arrived in the mail today. Chris, why don't you have it here? It's got a, it's got a grand unveiling later. And so I'm going to take it on my next trip, uh, test it out, let you know whether it's a good alternative or not. But they look pretty cool uh, when I took them out of the box and saw them on their website. Uh, Mark says, maybe I should swim professionally with those giant flippers. Maybe, maybe I should. You're right. Uh, Points Traveler says, camping is better than staying at a courtyard. Ow! Yeah, it's probably true. Uh, Paintkiller says, why would you even pack pillows or blankets? Airline, give those away free. If you're on a good airline, they give those away for free. Not, I guess not Not all do. Um, this is, uh, Seth says, I have an eye mask that straps to the seat, so no pillow or head bobs. That's a, like a pulled, interesting, pulled your, an eye mask attached to the seat. All right. Um, Mark Hoffman says you can also ship your stuff before you fly cheaper than it used to be domestically. At least in the U.S. you can do that domestically. You can't do it internationally. I was looking um, when we're taking our next trip to Canada back to Vancouver for Whistler. There was no option to ship from Los Angeles to Vancouver because it was international. Domestic United offers a whole bunch of shipping things. In Japan, using the luggage shipping services are super fantastic. We love those. Okay. The... Ninth mistake that inexperienced travelers make, uh, and I've heard some allusions to this already in the comments we've read, but it is 
thinking that you always have to check a bag. Uh, so packing everything in checked luggage. It's saying, I'm gonna check a bag, I'll just put it all in there, and that way my hands are free when I go to the airport. I don't, it's easier that way to go around the airport when you don't carry anything in your hands. Except when you put literally everything into your suitcase and you've checked it and it gets lost or delayed. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have it when you get to your destination. Or if you misconnect or if your flight gets canceled and they don't give you your suitcase back until tomorrow and they say spend the night in the hotel, you want to have something with you in the airport that you carry on to the plane that has your basic necessities, that has change of underwear, change of socks, uh, your computer, anything you're really gonna need, your medicine, that carried on with you. It might be a hassle to bring that bag on the plane, just bring that bag on the plane. 95% of your trips, hopefully you won't need it, but that one time it's one of those 5% of your trips or even less, you will be glad you had some stuff with you. The only time I really uh, don't take anything with me like like that is if I'm Sam going for a day trip to Vegas. I'm on the 6 a.m. flight out of here and I'm on the 8 p.m. flight back. I'm like, okay, I don't really need to take anything because I'm not staying there, I'm not staying here, it's not very far. And yes, I could actually buy everything I need in Las Vegas at uh, you know a Target if I needed to spend the extra night someplace. Mistake number 10 is wearing jeans to hot and humid environments. Jeans are great leg attire. I love jeans, but in places like Bangkok, Thailand, jeans equal death. They trap the heat, they trap the humidity. They're just so hot. And especially places where it's hot, humid, and rainy, then they get wet, and then it gets hot, and it's just awful. And if it is a rainy destination, jeans, like, they don't dry, like, ever. <laughs> like, like, ever. You'll hang those jeans to dry in your hotel room, and they'll be wet three days later. So if you're going to some place that's hot, humid, or wet, keep the jeans at home. Um, and uh, instead, you know, look for some, some more quick drying materials. Uh, related to uh, checking bags, Remy says, uh, don't check a bag on Spirit Airlines, famous for uh, getting it lost. Chris says, how often have you had your luggage lost? I have had my luggage officially lost once. My luggage was officially lost once. Didn't come back. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. My luggage came back to me one month later. Uh, I was taking a trip to France, to Marseille in the south of France. I get there, my luggage isn't there. The airline has no idea where it is. Uh, and so I had to go buy a bunch of stuff from the French version of Walmart, Car 4. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. Um, but it was a real drag, let me tell you. Uh, and then when I get my stuff back, like, uh, U.S. Airways, which I didn't fly, called me up out of the blue to be like, hey, uh, your luggage just arrived uh, at San Diego Airport. Do you want to do you want to come and get it? I'm like, I guess so. And I get my luggage and it is it is like it's is wet. I mean, it I don't know if it like fell in a lake or uh, in a thunderstorm, but all my clothes and everything that was in it was like blue and green. It was gross. I had to throw everything away. The, there's a fight with the airline to get reimbursed uh, 1500 bucks or something for the stuff that was in it. I, honestly, I don't think I got reimbursed for what the cost of the stuff and the suitcase and all those things were actually in it because the whole thing was toast, uh, but it was really a drag. Delayed, my luggage has been delayed a lot. Delayed for hours, delayed for a day. Um, so that's something that happens quite a bit. And I've often had it where I've misconnected in a city, like for example, in Dallas, misconnect in Dallas, have to spend the night in Dallas, and then they don't give me my luggage back. Um, they don't give me my, they're just like, we'll put your luggage on your flight tomorrow morning that we've booked you on, and good luck, go have your hotel, come back here tomorrow, go to your destination and you know pick up your luggage when you get to, um, when you get to France, uh, and and uh, Chris says crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Points Traveler points out a great tip, which is pop an air tag in your bag. Back then, when my luggage was lost, they didn't have such things as air tags. Uh, but that's a great tip. Derek says, how often do you travel? It really depends. Uh, in in COVID times, not so much. Uh, but in in normal times. Um, probably one or two trips per month uh, would be how often uh, I would travel. Uh, 
Number 11, uh, the 11th common mistake that inexperienced travelers make is not packing an umbrella. You know what? This is an item that you can buy in almost any destination, but it's so handy to have it with you, and they're so small. Uh, I take an umbrella with me wherever I go. Wherever I go, I've always got an umbrella. In case you're wondering what color, a yellow umbrella, of course, because it's gonna be that one time when you didn't pack an umbrella, that you're someplace out of the airport, trying to get to your hotel, you can't find a place to buy an umbrella, and it's great that you uh, have one. For example, uh, and this is maybe where like OC Girl and I differ slightly, um, but me having my umbrella packed was a lifesaver for one of our trips. We were in Japan, we went to Nikko, and on the train ride from Tokyo to Nikko, it started to rain, was pouring rain when we got to Nikko. OC Girl's like, no big deal. We'll just go buy an umbrella because you can buy umbrellas anywhere in Japan. If you've been to Japan, you'll know on every street corner in Tokyo, you can buy an umbrella because there's a convenience store in every corner in Tokyo. You get out to Nikko, man, it was like a half mile to the 7-Eleven to get another umbrella. I had one, so I walked to the 7-Eleven to buy a second umbrella to come back for OC Girl so that two of us had umbrellas. Anyway, I was having an umbrella. The one umbrella was a lifesaver in that case. Um, Yoshi says, not packing an umbrella can be costly. You don't think it will rain and uh, it will for sure. Seth, an experienced traveler says, I always pack an umbrella. Uh, and Carmen says, uh, I bring an umbrella and I pretty much only use it when I leave Southern California. Yes, this umbrella is a travel umbrella. I never use it when I'm here. Um, I guess I have another one in my car that I use uh, if I do that. Brooklyn Joe says, don't need one if you go to Arizona. The time I don't bring one to Arizona is when I will need one in Arizona. Danielle says, a piece of luggage uh, that we had was put on a different plane than my mom and I were coming home from Barcelona. It was delivered the following day after we came home. I, I don't mind as much when it's delayed coming home, right? You're like, I can get my dirty laundry back a day later. It's really a drag uh, when you get it there. Lance says, I like a $5 uh, general umbrella if there might be rain. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't, I mean, okay, I'm a dork, so I need a yellow umbrella. So this was a $20 umbrella because you don't get a lot of $5 yellow umbrellas. Um, but yes, just having some basic umbrella around is great. Uh, and Kathy says in, in Melbourne, Australia, it's raining today, so she has an umbrella. Very good, Kathy. Philly, Tomcat likes to take a poncho. All right, that's an interesting one. Um, Zachary Smith says, uh, why do people in big cities carry umbrellas? because umbrellas can't walk. All right, that's a good one, Zachary. That's a good joke. I'll have to remember that one for later. The 12th mistake that inexperienced travelers make when they're packing is they pack new shoes for a trip. If we're, if we're, if we're pros, we've all done this once upon a time. We've taken new shoes for a trip and really regretted it because we've gotten some like awful blisters or feet hurt, things like that. Don't, don't do it. Don't take new shoes for a trip. Take some shoes that you know that they don't hurt your feet, that you've broken them in. You've worn them more than just around their house. You've worn them outside. You've walked miles in them because when you travel, you're going to be walking way more than you do on a regular day. So actually, I would recommend you uh, break in your shoes at least that much. You know, If you're going to be traveling to Tokyo, Hawaii, someplace you're going to walk five or ten miles, walk five or ten miles in your shoes before you take them there to know whether they're going to hurt your feet or not. Um, mistake number 13 is when you're packing is forgetting to use the inside of your shoes as a place to pack stuff. What have I got in this shoe? Speaking of blisters, I've got this Dr. Scholl's blister defense. This video is not sponsored, but I really love, uh, this stuff. It's like a, it's like a stick of, I wouldn't call it petroleum jelly, but like a slippery thing that you can put on your toe or on the back of your heel. You basically like rub it on your foot, any spot that rubs, and then it creates this little kind of um, slippery part on your foot so that you get blisters less. So I love, I love this. And you notice where I had it. <laughs> inside my shoe. doesn't take up any space. What do I have to put in there? Socks. Socks are a great thing to roll up and put inside your shoes. What else do I have in here? Uh, I have some also heel pads for blisters. Those are the places where I often get blisters. Um, and so if you do 
end up with blisters on the first or second day of your trip, go get something to make them feel better. On one of my trips to Sydney, Australia, I ended up with blisters on day one, um, and then I bought some things like this and covered them up, and I was good to go for day number two, but otherwise I would have been limping a lot. Um, so remember to use the inside of your shoes as well as not taking new shoes. Uh, Mark says always, uh, Seth says always break in your shoes. Uh, that's a good tip. Lance says sunglasses with socks and underwear great for shoes, protects sunglasses from getting broke. That's a good tip, Lance, uh, to put the sunglasses in your shoes. Mark says uh, hopefully don't put your toothbrush in your shoes. I think that's a good toothbrush. Keep that in a separate place. Um, and uh, back in the umbrellas, Danielle says, always better to have an umbrella and not need it than to need one and not have it. That's a lesson to live by as well. Uh, Yoshi says, some things I store in my dress shoes are a charger, bricks, Blistex, and my watch charger. All right, that's another uh, great set of things to pack in there too. He has a good, Zachary gives a good tip, which is uh, if your shoes stink, put some tea bags in there or... Uh, like coffee bags, if you got like coffee bags with grounds or things like that, those work in there as well. Provided you don't mind the um, coffee scent. That'd probably be for a coffee drinker. Speaking of which, I'm thirsty. What am I drinking today? Today I am drinking a lavender tea latte from Better Buzz uh, Coffee Shop in San Diego. And um, what's kind of neat uh, about this, I don't like paper straws. This is a paper straw, but the paper straw uh, has their like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like motto, it says life's better buzzed on it. So I can appreciate they didn't just buy the world's cheapest, crappiest paper straws, but it's actually a pretty good paper straw. This is a pretty good um, coffee. If you're looking for a coffee shop when you visit San Diego, uh, Better Buzzed is one of OC Girl's favorites. All right, uh, common mistake number 14 is not packing a day bag. Okay, so you got your big huge suitcase, but and maybe you got your big backpack, but what are you gonna do when you go out for the day? You don't want to carry that big backpack. You don't want to carry that big thing. And so it's really important to carry some small bag to carry around your stuff for the day. Um, this small bag I pack empty in my uh, check-in or overhead bag um, and then I take it out and I fill it up with the stuff when I get to the destination. You can have a small backpack, you can have a small this, you can have a small purse, you can have a fanny pack, um, but having a day bag really, really quite useful, particularly if you go to cities. Oh, and uh, if you're a, a veteran here at Yellow Productions, you'll know what bag I like, but if you're new, I really like the PackSafe bags. Uh, this is the PackSafe MetroSafe LS there's a 150, a 250, and a 350. They're different sizes. And they got water balls on each side. So they are uh, like got metal in this thing, so you can't cut them. They've got like anti-theft zippers. I've got like four or five of these things, different sizes and colors, and I love them. If you want to see more of that, you can search my review. Pack safe. P-A-C-S-A-F-E. Pack safe. Yellow Productions. Just search for that. Um, Paintkiller says, I've gotten away with not using a day bag. If need be, I bring my backpack. Or maybe you have a small backpack. My backpack is like a ridiculous size because I've got all the camera gear in it. And so uh, for me, I definitely need a um, a day bag. Uh, Jeff says, I went to Better Buzz in Point Loma. Very good. It, it, all right. Very good, Jeff. Uh, yeah, they have a number of locations in San Diego. Um, but that one's nice because it's a, it's a drive-thru. Uh, Seth is drinking Hawaiian Sun Passion Orange. Oh, that sounds good, too. And who's that girl says I always pack a cross body bag. Yeah, I I like bags um, that are that are cross body that are, you can keep in the front or you can keep on the side. I don't really like backpacks because to me that's just like uh, easy invitation for somebody to steal something out of it. And then if I did that, then I'd want to carry it on the front. And then I feel like I look like a huge dork if I'm carrying my backpack on the front. Not that wearing a yellow shirt everywhere I go makes me look like a huge dork at all. Uh, Danielle um, seconds the cross body bag. Uh, Paintkiller93 says, uh, what and when is the next live stream? Well, you know the way that you find out about that Paintkiller is you sign up for the Yellow Productions update at update.yellow-productions.com and you will get an email every time I schedule a live stream. Paintkiller, my guess is you're probably already signed up for there. I think the next live stream will be on Monday. 
I haven't written it yet, so I don't know what the topic is going to be yet. Uh, if you got a suggestion for me, let me know. I've got a few days to write it, right? Um, Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, Craig is, uh, Craig wants to remind you all, if you're enjoying it, please give this video a thumbs up. Every like of this video goes to feed some premium bamboo to the Yellow Productions crew behind me, and they are quite hungry, so please help a starving panda out. Uh, there are 165 of you watching right now and 54 likes. Can we get that up to 100? Can you help me get that up to 100? I would really appreciate it. All right, common mistake number 15 is not leaving room in your suitcase for souvenirs or buying stuff when you go, filling it up to the gills, yeah. stuff it closed, and then there's no room for all the stuff that you buy. And then, and then if, if that's you, then you have to buy another suitcase to bring all that stuff home. And so either A, leave some empty room in there for the stuff that you buy, or B, bring a folding duffel bag. That's what we like to do. We bring a folding duffel bag with us, um, and then we have, in this case, one more suitcase that we uh, bring back, but we don't pack the uh, souvenirs or fragile items in the duffel bag that we took out of our suitcase. We put all of our dirty laundry in the duffel bag we took out of our suitcase, and then uh, we put any of the souvenirs and stuff or the things we really want to keep in the actual good luggage because we figure if the duffel bag gets lost, ripped, crushed, uh, they can crush, steal, resell on eBay our dirty, filthy laundry that is just fine. Um, and, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> and Zachary says, uh, if you say being a dork is a bad thing, embrace your inner dork. I, you know what? You're right. Yes, we should all, Im I, I am, I am fine with my inner dork, which is why I wear the yellow shirt all the time. Uh, Paintkiller93 says the only uh, souvenirs I'll buy are fridge magnets. Otherwise, I'd buy things I use like clothing. Um, that's a great thing, too. The clothing isn't uh, fragile, and the fridge magnets are pretty small. And by the way, I see the likes up to 95. So thank you for the 40 extra likes. Uh, if you didn't like it yet, five more will get us up to 100, and that'll be super awesome. The 16th mistake of inexperienced travelers when packing is not putting toiletries in a plastic bag. Plastic bag? Not putting your toiletries in a plastic bag. Not one this big, but put in a plastic bag. Why? Uh, well, people might say, well, Chris, I'm, I'm checking my luggage. Why do I need to put in a plastic bag? I, I thought I only have to put in a plastic bag when I'm carrying it on. The reason why you want to put your toiletries in a plastic bag all the time is they leak, they leak. You know what, pressure changes up in the air and some toiletries that you thought were sealed and were perfectly good are gonna just kinda vomit out of their container. And if you have it in a plastic bag, it'll be contained and it won't blah on all of your um, fancy clothes in your suitcase. Now, if you're like, well, you know, it's body wash, I'll just wash it anyway, it's still yucky when that happens. So make sure, make sure you bag it your toiletries, whether it's in your carry-on or your check-in suitcase. Common mistake number 17 is buying a suitcase that looks like everyone else's. You, you see it, the same black suitcase that people mistake for other people's black suitcases. I've seen it too many times where people pick up the wrong suitcase because they all look the same. If you are gonna buy a suitcase that looks, I mean, there's only so many miles of suitcases, right? Um, do something to decorate your suitcase. You see here, I got the smiley face here on the Ramoa. Yeah, it's a, it's a really expensive Ramoa suitcase with smiley face stickers on both sides of it uh, and the top. I, nobody is gonna mistake this for theirs. Um, I could do that on the hard side case on my Travel Pro, which is a ballistic nylon case that I only ever check in because I don't want things to get wet in it because ballistic nylon gets wet, soaks through. That was the one that got lost. I checked in and it was a ballistic nylon Travel Pro soaked. Hard case wouldn't get soaked. Um, I used a paint pen on the sides of it and I drew these little yellow squares so that, you know, I know I can see this yellow square and other people would look at it and be like, 
that's not mine. Didn't have yellow squares, didn't have a yellow back. So if you see a Travel Pro that looks kind of like a bumblebee, you will know whose that is. Uh, and Zachary, Th Zachary Smith says, uh, also, it's a duffel bag, right? So we have one bag uh, that we travel with, and I should have had it here, is the Eat Sleep Travel Repeat Duffel from the Yellow Productions shop, and it's a great yellow bag. Nobody else gonna have that bag. You know who's gonna have that bag? Kathy's gonna have that bag, because Kathy has one of those bags. I got one of those bags. And you know, frankly, if you see somebody else that has one of those bags, they should be your new best friend, because they're super cool, because they buy like a Yellow Productions duffel bag, uh, which is cool. Mark Hoffman says, I see my suitcase 10 times before it's my, and that's it, right? It's like, I think that's my suitcase. That's not my suitcase. I think that's my suitcase. That's not my suitcase. And really, you just, it's hard for you, but you don't want other people to take your suitcase. Um, right. Uh, Seth, by the way, points out about the bat, the bottles leaking that I was talking about. And so this actually applies, and I was remiss to say this, this actually applies more than just toiletries. It applies to if you're buying like things that are in plastic bottles. Um, in like Hawaii, one of the things people like to bring back is they like to bring back uh, garlic shrimp marinade, um, but that will burst and leak. Um, so anything that you bring that's liquid, liquidy in your, uh, really anything, in the plane, under the plane, make sure that's uh, bagged up really, really quite well. Uh, Eric says, I'm loving my new hard case. Uh, that's awesome. And Kathy says, I bought one and I'm using it today. Because Kathy, because you're awesome. Awesome. That is why. Points Traveler asked if I ever use locks on my checked luggage. Never. I don't use locks, period. I think they're security theater. Anybody who really wants to open it, you know, can just get like a ballpoint pen or they can get the TSA keys and they can open it. And so I don't um, bother with uh locking my luggage and uh, Yoshi says as Yoshi is his favorite I have Yoshi stickers on my suitcase that seems uh, very fitting Yoshi uh, I, I love it if I see a suitcase with Yoshi I'll shout you out and see if it's there uh, Eric says I love pizza do you have any recommendations San Diego Bronx pizza is my recommendation all right 18 18th mistake that inexperienced travelers make is not putting their contact info on their luggage and in their luggage. Chris, what do you mean on their luggage, in their luggage, or waiting to the airport before they put their contact luggage, on um, contact information on their luggage? I find it like, airports always ask that question, do you have your <clears throat> contact information on your luggage? If not here, write it on this thing. And of course for me, I'm like, who doesn't have their contact information on their luggage? Uh, but you know what, people don't. And so uh, like here on the Travel Pro, there's this little uh, thing on the side that has like, I'm not going to pull it out because it has my phone number on it. I don't, I don't need everybody's phone call. But right here uh, has my contact information on this card. And then the Ramoa um, has the, the little like Ramoa tag right here that has the contact information. But you know what? This could come off. That thing on the side of the Travel Pro could come up. So it's really important to also have your contact information on a 3x5 note card, on a piece of paper in the actual suitcase. So make sure you do that. If you're too lazy to write it down, print out your itinerary that has your name and your frequent flyer stuff and put it in your bag. Um, Kevin says, uh, I've tied the old scarf on the luggage handle, which is a good one, except when it gets caught in the machinery or something like that, and then it's just not not there when you see it. I've, I've put plenty of um, luggage tags on things that haven't uh, come back later. Um, and uh, Juicy Fruit says, where is your next trip? The next big trip that we've got planned is to uh, Whistler, Canada, Vancouver. We're going back to Vancouver, Canada again. Uh, Mark says, I put an air tag on the outside and rattlesnakes on mine. Rattlesnakes. Very good. All right. Common mistake of inexperienced travelers number 19 is going to an international destination and not bringing a international um, plug converter thingamajigger why because you know all hotels must have international plugs they assume international people are coming right wrong uh, lots of hotels just have the plugs of wherever they are whatever country they are and so it's important to research where you're going what the plugs look like and then make sure you have the right adapters for the plugs and to make sure you have an appropriate number of international adapters for all the things you want to charge for us 
I carry use about three of these international adapters and a power strip so that if I need to plug in more than three things, then I can plug in the power strip. Also, if you use um, any sort of appliances while you travel, looking at what the voltage is. In particular, hair dryers. Hair dryers often don't work between uh, 110, 120, 240, 220. They're like, they got a fixed voltage, and if you take it outside of that, they just don't work. Uh, there are hair dryers and curling irons and those sorts of things that ha that are made for international travel and have switches on them that you can switch it based upon the voltage that it's using. And so if you're gonna be traveling a lot, make sure you get those. OC Girl has all those things because we travel a lot. She likes to bring her own, um, but they work when we have the international versions. When we don't, they don't work. And, and like super fancy hotels may even have in addition to, um, you know, these plugs for you, they may have voltage converters, but voltage converters don't work very well with um, high draw appliances like curling irons and hair dryers. Um, so uh, Point Trailer says, make sure you have the converter too. Paint Killer says, uh, one time in Vienna, I left my adapter as I explored the city and when I came back, it was still there. That's super cool. Uh, I guess uh, Vienna is a pretty t trustworthy place. Juicy Fruit says, safe to use a power strip on the adapter. I mean, I, I think so, right? I mean, the adapter, fundamentally, it's just some wires that take the wires from the outlet and adapt them a little differently. Um, so, you know, I mean, you want to probably not jury rig too many things on the outside of it, but if it's not sparking and it's not getting hot, then it's probably pretty good. Uh, Yoshi says, Apple chargers are great for international plugs as you can slide them out and change. That's true. There are a lot of those where you can have the like different end things on them. So that's a great tip. Uh, Yoshi says it's not recommend. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do if you got a lot of stuff to charge. So, um, that's it. Uh, Justin says, I don't wanna disclose my phone number because Justin wanted to talk to me about my car's extended warranty. Thank you for that, Justin. I'm looking forward to your phone call. Um, Painkiller says, I think airports, particularly airport hotels, should have universal plugs. I agree. I think they should, but they don't. <laughs> and, uh, here we go, just joining, can you start over at one? For you, I will start over at number 20. All right, let's go to number 20. The 20th mistake inexperienced travelers make is they buy a suitcase with only two wheels. Look, I've got one here, this Travel Pro. It only has two wheels. I bought this thing a long time ago, so I still use it. You see it only has two wheels. It doesn't have these front wheels up here. Uh, if I was doing it again, I wouldn't buy one with two wheels. I would buy one with four wheels. Any of the suitcases I've bought in the last five years, eight years, I don't know, have four wheels. Four wheel suitcases are so much easier to take around nearly almost everywhere um, because in addition to wheeling them like wide ways, you can wheel them down the airport aisle, you know, narrow ways like this, um, which is like, a heck of a difference compared to trying to take the two wheel thing down the airplane aisle. You see it all the time. People are doing that. They're bumping into people's legs. They're bumping into chairs. Um, the great thing about the four wheel ones is you can just, you can wheel them upright. You just raise this up and then you wheel this thing along. You don't have to tilt it. It's super easy, especially if you want to stack a bag on top. So I would recommend four wheel luggage. I think in this day and age, two wheel luggage is a mistake. Now, why would people buy two-wheel luggage? What's the difference and why do some people advocate it? With two-wheel luggage, you can get a little bit more packing room in your suitcase because if you look in this suitcase and you see these wheels, um, they are recessed into the suitcase and then there's only two of them, there's not four. But if we look at the four-wheel suitcase, on this Ramoa, they're recessed as well, but now there's four. So there's gonna be a little bit of space taken up here. One thing you'll wanna look at when you look at suitcases and you look at wheels on the outside, you'll wanna look at that to say, where, where do they put the wheels? Do they recess them? Are they all the way out? If you want the wheels to last longer, you'll want them to be recessed in because they'll just take less um, bangs and bumps though. You do kind of have them like an odd size inside your suitcase. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. 
All right, fellow explorers, you are now armed and dangerous for your next trip. I'm sure you won't make any of those mistakes again, but I'm curious, what mistakes have you made that I didn't mention that you think uh, our other explorers should learn from? And then if you're on the live stream or if you're on the archive, what questions do you have for me? I answer them here and I'll answer them on the archive too. Make sure you put a question mark at the end of it so I know it's a question and I'll be giving away one of these Yellow Productions crew shirts later. Uh, I did mention earlier that I've got these new level eight suitcases that I'll be taking on my next few trips. Uh, and so I'm gonna be doing a giveaway actually of those suitcases, um, new ones, not the ones I've got, but new ones when I finally talk about and unveil them. So I'll just say stay tuned if you wanna win some suitcases uh, for an upcoming live stream. I will make sure to post it on my community page and I'll make sure to post it on the email that I send out for the Yellow Productions update you can sign up for right there so you'll know when that giveaway is gonna be so you can win something that's uh, slightly more valuable than a Yellow Productions crew shirt. Although the Yellow Productions crew shirts, they're, I, like I think they're awesome. Uh, Joseph says, any suggestion on TSA luggage locks? I don't use them, I don't lock anything so um, I probably have no suggestion for you there. Uh, Zachary says, travel tip number 21, like this video and subscribe for more travel hangouts. Thank you for that tip, Zachary. And I did see we did get up above uh, 100, we're at 117 likes, so thank you very much. Uh, and SoCal Seth, thank you for the little suitcase uh, sticker. I appreciate the support. And the Yellow Production Screw does too, because that's gonna buy them some super duper extra premium bamboo. Uh, Kathy says, I forgot to claim my giveaway a few weeks ago. It's still open, Kathy. If you win, you'll always get it. Um, Uniplex's mistake made traveling not using sunscreen. That's a good tip as well. Sunscreen's uh, super important and people often forget their sunscreen. Uh, Zachary says, why don't you use the thanks button? I see other YouTubers using it. It should be active. The thanks button should be active. And then the um, super stickers are too. And Zachary, thank you. I see your super sticker. So thank you for the number one finger right there. I don't, um, I've disabled the super chats because I feel like when the super chats are there, then it's like, um, you're paying for me to like read your question or things like that. And I kind of want everybody to be able to ask the same questions and not have those get prioritized. But I do uh, really appreciate the support on the stickers. So thank you. Um, James says, uh, people often forget to have some currency to the place they're traveling to. That's a good one, James. I've had some friends that did that. They arrived um, in France as a country of all places and didn't have any euros and didn't take any out at the train station and got into a taxi and they were like, okay, how are you going to pay? And it's like, I don't have any money. We're going to take you to an ATM. You're going to get some money. Guess what? Uh, Paint Killer says, my biggest mistake was booking flights with very long layovers. How long were they, Paint Killer? Long layovers can be uh, super rough. Bob says, I'm headed to Paris in October. Do you have a favorite place? Uh, if you want something interesting, uh, the Paris Sewer Museum is a really interesting uh, place. But there's a, uh, my favorite place, there's a restaurant um, like, kind of at the end of the Champs-Élysées, maybe it's not really on the Champs-Élysées, but maybe between there and the Louvre, that just sells soufflés. I think it might be called Les Soufflés. They have like a three course souffle meal. I would highly recommend that, Bob. Um, Carmen says the thanks button is not active. Um, interesting, I see people using some of the super stickers. So I think the super stickers uh, should be active. Um, so I don't know, when I click the little, at least for me on the chat, there's like a little, dollar thing and then there's a little thing that says super sticker so maybe youtube hasn't um activated that in all countries or locations or something like that i am not sure but at least a few people in the chat have used the super stickers so i'm curious i'm curious if there's more people that if you have a little dollar and you click it like it doesn't doesn't do anything um let me know we'll take an opinion poll uh zachary says chris any funny stories from your travel mistakes from the beginning of your travels uh you know what what, I, I know I've shared this one before, but I, I think it's pretty funny because uh, it's fun at my own expense. The first time I went to Japan, I was convinced I was not, I was going to be like super hungry. And so I took a box of power bars. You know, I was convinced everybody's going to be asleep on the floor. I took a pillow with me. Um, I didn't need any of my power bars and I didn't need my pillow. Uh, and so some of these mistakes, they are indeed my own. So perhaps that's just uh, one I will share with you. One I will say, and maybe this was interesting, was um, another reason why I don't use the locks is on one of my Ramoa suitcases coming back from one of my trips, I put the locks in and it got stuck. Like the lock got stuck in it. Um, <clears throat> but the good thing was I was going, like I came back and then like the very next day I was traveling again to Waikiki. 
uh, in Hawaii, and there's a Ramoa store in Waikiki, and so I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm just gonna take that suitcase that's broken along with a new suitcase that has all my stuff that I packed in it. I'm gonna take it to the Ramoa store and have them unlock it. And sure enough, they did, and they replaced the lock because the lock was busted. It was the only thing I've had um, go wrong. It was, it was actually on this particular suitcase, but after that, I just don't lock it anymore. But I thought it was kind of funny that I brought a suitcase back from maybe Italy or France or something like that with all my stuff and then uh, to Southern California and then got on a plane to Waikiki so that I could get Ramoa to unlock it. Are there Ramoa stores here? Like there's one in Beverly Hills I can go to or South Coast. Well, there's a whole bunch around here, but it just turned out to be convenient to then take it on the plane and, and do that in Waikiki. Uh, Craig offers a rainbow in the super sticker, so thank you for that, Craig. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, let's see. I see uh, in the comments um, and I see the sticker, uh, but not the thanks. Yeah, so the thanks you only see on the archive, um, but then the stickers you see on the live stream. It's kind of weird how YouTube does that, but if you were to come back to watch the archive, then you should see the um, thanks button too. Wu Tai says I get like 50% more space with rolling up my clothes. That's a good, uh, that's a good metric. Um, Lean Into Life the English Way says, uh, do you buy toiletries or buy uh, when at a destination? Um, I bring my toiletries. I pretty much bring all my toiletries when we go. Uh, toothpaste, some of those things I might get from the hotel, but anything I need, I think I'm going to bring with me, generally. Okay. Um, and uh, Wu Tai asked if I roll them. I roll them every time. That was actually number one. Uh, and uh, in Dubai, no dollar sign. Yeah, I think it's a country uh, thing. Different rolls out in different places. So thank you for that uh, report. Kevin says, uh, print out your trip info. Uh, don't depend on your phone because sometimes no signal. That's a great tip, Kevin. Um, I probably should have mentioned that as well. I just maybe I didn't put it in packing because I, I put it in my backpack instead of my packing things. But yeah, print out all your hotels, all your itineraries, all that stuff because sometimes you need to show it at customs or immigration or whatever and your phone doesn't work, something happened to it. I've had weird things happen on my phone. Doesn't turn on, battery's dead, but you know what, paper always works. So I like that one. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, mistake number 22 is waiting for the Las Vegas to Los Angeles rail to open. It's gonna be a long time before uh, that opens. Grant says, any thoughts on the $50 million grant for infrastructure at LAX and 10 million for Long Beach? Grant, I actually didn't dive into it. I was actually reading a news article today about what Dulles Airport was getting for their infrastructure, um, but LAX sorely needs infrastructure. I'm really, I, I did make the video recently about um, why everybody hates LAX Airport, but I am really looking forward to their people mover opening. Um, I think that'll make things so, so much better. Uh, Kathy says, make sure you take a power bank too. That's a good uh, tip as well, Kathy. Um, I think that like, I think one of the, like, uh, uh, you know, there's some suitcases that are like the smart suitcases that have batteries in them. I'd avoid those because they're like, how big is the battery? You got to take it out. It's too big to go on the plane. And that's just one of those um, seems cooler than it really is. Uh, Painkiller says, I'd like to suggest you make a video about uh, visiting LA without a car. Perhaps you can include uh, the Crenshaw line LX people mover in it. All right. I will take that suggestion. Painkiller 93. Mm. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, as usual, I give away some Yellow Productions swag in every video. Today I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions crew shirt if you can answer one of my questions correctly. And my question for you to win this shirt shipped anywhere in the world is on my Ramoa suitcase that I've got right back here. I've got some stickers on it. What are the stickers of? If you can answer that question, you will win this shirt. If you don't get to win this shirt, well, you can you can pick one up on your own. You can head over to the Yellow Productions shop, shop.yellow-productions.com. Pick up a shirt, pick up a Yellow Productions duffel bag. There's lots of great stuff there. I'm gonna take a drink of my uh, lavender tea latte while I wait for those answers to roll in. Uh, Diogo says, Love your videos, thanks for the content. Thank you, Diogo, I appreciate it. Um, and now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations, Panjo, you are the winner. Panjo's on a roll. What, I think this is maybe number three, Panjo? Uh, I think so, but congratulations, Smiley Face is indeed 
the sticker that I have on this suitcase. Um, Panjo, uh, send me an email to this address uh, to chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your size. Let me know where you want to go. Uh, and if you've already got one of these panda shirts, let me know a different one that you want, and I will get that one on its way to uh, the consolation prize. But unfortunately, not a prize goes to Natalie, who made the typo of Emily Fave. Um, but that was right next to Panjo's. Um, Natalie, the smarter fingers next time will let you in. But I do want to let you know yours came in right there at uh, the same similar time as Panjo's did, but Panjo spelled it correctly. All right, well, fellow explorers, thank you very much for watching today. It is always super cool hanging out with y'all. I learn some things uh, from you. And uh, with that, I won't say goodbye because I'm gonna see you in the next video, next live stream, probably on Monday, but sign up for the Yellow Productions update to know exactly what time and exactly what the topic is. You'll know as soon as I know once I write the outline. All right.